All right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the February 9th, 2022 uh, Curriculum Instruction Committee meeting. Um, we will begin with um, any public comment. There is no public comment today. Thank you, Dr. Cuppet. Um, Mr. Johnson and Ms. Johnson, any corrections um, or additions to the minutes? No. All right, the minutes will stand as uh, published. And are there any board member comments at this time? Very good. We, we like to save our comments for questions and, and direct it at the, uh, the presentation. All right, take it away, Dr. Cuppet. Yeah, so good morning, everyone. Today, we're very excited to have Corinne Myers and Amy Strunz from our Department of Organizational Development. It's a relatively new department here in Frederick County Public Schools. And uh, they're going to talk a little bit about the nature of the department and the two large areas under which uh, they operate. Um, I do send apologies from Meg Lee, who is unable to be here. She is the director of that department and had a, a um, a family emergency that she had to attend to. So um, she sends her regrets. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Amy and Corinne to fill you in on all things organizational development. Good morning. Um, it's a pleasure to be here this morning representing organizational development. I'm Amy Strunz, as Kevin said, supervisor of induction and professional learning. And with me here today is my colleague, Corinne Myers, supervisor of leadership development. And again, as Kevin said, our director Meg Lee was unable to be here today due to a family emergency. So she definitely sends her regrets. But Corinne and I will be sharing a great deal of information today. So we have provided time at the end of our session today to answer any questions that may arise as we're talking today. And we'll be happy to answer those. Oops, too fast. So thank you so much for having us today. We're excited to talk with you about all things organizational development. And we do serve the FCPS's community's commitment to leadership and learning because really we are all about equipping and empower, empowering our community to positively impact each and every student here in FCPS. As Kevin mentioned, we are new. We were just launched in 2019. We are housed at the Staff Development Center right across from West Frederick Middle School on 44 West Frederick Street. We really pride ourselves in providing that visionary learning environment here at the SDC. We are grounded in research informed practices and all about those collaborative relationships. When you walk into the SDC, we want you to feel so energized and enthused about coming to learn and grow here with us. I am thrilled to be able to talk with you today about what we do in leadership development. I have four teacher specialists that work with me on the leadership development side. And one of the biggest things that we do here in leadership development is a comprehensive professional development system that works towards building a principal pipeline exceptional leaders innovating and transforming education, our elite program. We know that school leaders are a significant part of what our students and staff need to be successful. Research tells us that they absolutely impact student achievement, student absenteeism, teacher retention, teacher satisfaction, and school culture. So we need to invest in building that pipeline. In 2018, we started the Elite Academy that focuses in on those aspiring assistant principals. We use the professional standards for educational leaders to frame the professional learning experience that we offer. In addition, we really zero in on aligning to 
both the systemic priorities as well as our strategic goals. We invite leaders from across the system to come in and speak with these aspiring assistant principals. What we noticed in 2021 was there was a gap because while we had an aspiring assistant pro principal program, we didn't have one for aspiring principals. So in 2021, it was noted that, you know what, some of our aspiring principals really could use the same thing, but they came with some experience. And so we thought they can't, we can't have them do the exact same thing, but certain components certainly were applicable. So how could we marry the two? Well, what we do is we bring them into the elite academy, but we differentiate for our aspiring leaders. We use the experience that they already have to mentor and guide our elite academy participants while differentiating their experience so that they are getting ready for the principalship. So it was so exciting to see these two groups of folks not only working together, but also separately to getting the experiences they really need to be ready to jump into both aspiring assistant principal and principal roles. Coming up, we're excited to launch the next level of the elite family, and that is Elite Amplify. That's very focused on our teacher leaders. Maryland is coming up with teacher leadership standards. And so I am lucky to be a part at the state level of writing those standards. And so they are set to come out in probably the next four to six months. And so as they're coming out, we're going to do what I would like to call a soft launch this summer. And as they uh, publish the teacher leadership standards, we will use those standards to guide our professional learning for teacher leaders. You can see that there was a need in FCPS to build this principal pipeline, and we are so proud of what we've seen from our participants thus far. In cohort one, 92% of our participants are sitting in an administrative role currently. In cohort two, we are about 57% sitting in an administrative role. I do know that a couple of those folks are acting, acting assistant principals as well. Even in cohort three that just finished, we've got a couple acting assistant principals too. So we're very proud of the folks that have come out of the Elite Academy. One of our newest programs is Leaders Inspire and Facilitate Transformation. This is a program that was created in collaboration with the leaders in system accountability and school administration, as well as human resources. We are focused on supporting our newly hired school-based leaders. We know that when we in the past have focused on professional learning, that has happened in the summer. So we needed something that was more continuous and reoccurring for onboarding as folks came into FCPS. And so what we have created is a leadership coaching opportunity. Not only does it serve our new leaders, but it really has come to pass that this is inspiring for our veteran leaders who serve as coaches. And so coaches and coaches meet both face-to-face, -face. it could be on Google Meet, they do site visits, they also phone call, text, you know, almost like that bat phone. When you are in need of some support, you can call up your coach and get immediate relevant information and some support real time when you need it. And so you'll see here in cohort one, which launched December of 2020, we had 19 coaches with 32 coaches. It was a big year for hiring on the school administration side. In cohort two, we had 11 coaches and 20 coaches. Interestingly enough, mid-year this year, I'm sure you'll recall that we actually hired additional folks 
in previous years, we wouldn't have had the support system to offer any mid-year hires because much of our professional learning was in the summer. But with the LIFT program, we were able to find them some coaches and offer them immediate assistance as they were, assistance, excuse me, as they were hired. And now they have coaches for as they onboard this year, starting mid-year. Some additional things that we offer in leadership development, we offer lead and learns. And these lead and learns support all leaders across all departments in FCPS. And they're on a variety of topics. And we are actually offering one right now using the book Leadership is Language by David Marquette. It really focuses on the power of language a leader, a leader uses to transform and empower those they serve. We were thrilled. We are actually running two sessions, both that have about 20 to 22 leaders in each cohort. The framework for teaching is another huge part of what we do in leadership development. FCPS uses the framework for teaching to define high quality instruction. And therefore, it is imperative that we continually offer professional learning for all of our leaders that observe and evaluate teachers. And so any new administrator that comes into FCPS is required to be trained using the framework for teaching. Additionally, all leaders recalibrate using the framework for teaching so that we are sure to use the framework for teaching consistently across FCPS. We also offer a coaching course using the framework for teaching because it is a resource and a language that we should be talking every day. It's not just for observation evaluation. It really is about high quality instruction. And so utilizing that framework in our conversations about instruction is something that we want to encourage on a daily basis. Finally, we have a means to meet with leaders that is consistent, and that's our systemic leadership that we have monthly. So we meet with systemic leaders in the central office, school-based leaders, and teacher specialists, where we communicate systemic messages, systemic content, and overall leadership development so that everybody hears the same message and are able to walk away using those message, messages and bring them back to all of those that they serve. Well, I love to talk about professional learning and induction and the great, wonderful things that my team is doing to support the teachers here in Frederick County Public Schools. The slide you see before you um, shows an increase in all of our new hires over the past two years. It shows an increase in the total number of non-tenured teachers over the past two years. And it shows an increase in the number of conditionally certified teachers over the past two years. These increases definitely paint a picture of why the work my team does on a daily basis is more important than ever. The pandemic and the interrupted pre-service experience that many of our new hires have gone through have presented many challenges across the system. My team is working to mitigate some of these challenges and support the teachers wherever necessary. And as I'm sure you have heard, we are kind of in the midst of a teaching shortage and it's getting more and more difficult for us to find and hire those quality educators, which is going to make it even more important to support and retain the teachers that we do have. And with that being said, I'd like to talk a little bit about the induction program that we do have already in place that supports our teachers here in Frederick County Public Schools. It is a very robust induction program that is very well thought of um, throughout the state. So we take pride in the work that we do. Our induction program begins with a um, new, new, hire, new hire symposium, which is a four day onboarding experience, which is really meant to help our new hires learn about Frederick County Public Schools and how we operate. We work to build awareness in systemic initiatives, curriculum, instruction, and assessment. And we really help them forge those relationships, which will help them find the support they need throughout their career in FCPS. 
As part of their initial onboarding, they also have access to master teachers, which help support the content, and mentor teachers in each of our schools. These relationships with both master teachers and mentor teachers continue through their first few years here in FCPS. They are also offered ongoing opportunities to participate in MSDE courses that, um, that are awarded for credit and we are offered them free of charge. These various courses are available during their first three years as they work to achieve tenure in our system. And in addition to the induction programming that I just discussed, my team also works to support other various programs in the system. And this slide illustrates just a few of those. The first one is the Maryland Accelerates Teacher Residency Program. This is a grant funded program through the Department of Education. And this grant is between Frostburg State University, Garrett and Frederick County. This grant provides teachers, teacher candidates with a Master of Arts degree and they have a year long residency here in Frederick County Public Schools. We entered into this relationship with Frostburg during the spring of 2020, which I think we can all remember what was happening here in the spring of 2020. Um, but during the 2020-21 school year, we had four candidates in our system from this program. We went on to hire all four of those candidates. This year, we are currently housing seven candidates in our school and we will continue to support these two cohorts moving forward, but then we'll be transitioning out of this grant. The second item here on the slide is our National Board Certification for Teachers, which I will be coming to the board this evening to announce this year's um, teachers that have achieved this status. This is a very well-respected certification in education. This certification is based on a set of rigorous standards, which really outline what our accomplished teachers in a specific area should both know and be able to do. The oversight of this program just transitioned to our program during the summer of 2021. So it's really been a year of learning for our team about this process and what it entails. But we are very excited about this opportunity to grow this program moving forward. And with the adoption of the blueprint, as we've all been talking about recently, and that financial incentive that's associated with this certificate, um, we are definitely preparing for an increase in candidates who are excited and want to take advantage of this program. And so we are ready. Right now, there are currently only 66 teachers in our system that hold this certification. But we are um, right now kind of keeping um, a spreadsheet of those interested candidates that are reaching out to us since you know the blueprint has come to light and that financial incentive has been there. And right now on that interest list, we have over 40 names who um, are interested in thinking about it as the year progresses. And so in May, we will be, we will be holding um, an information evening about how to pursue national board certification. And so once we get some of those numbers, we will really be thinking about how to further develop and support this program moving forward because we know it's going to be a need as we move on to adopt career ladders. And so we're excited about the potential of this program. The third thing on this slide are professional development school partnerships, which we have with those schools listed there. We have been in partnership with our local surrounding colleges for over 25 years. And these partnerships really focus on the academic and clinical preparation of interns and the continuous professional development of both our school system and our institutes of higher education faculty. And, you know, we know as the need for quality teaching candidates increases, this partnership is going to be more important than ever before because we really need to um, grow these quality candidates so they can come on to having a future with Frederick County Public Schools. Moving on, my team also works with MSDE credit offerings. Each year we offer a wide, a wide range of opportunities for educators to grow professionally um, and earn the necessary credits for certifi certification renewal. We offer semesterized courses in the summer, the fall, and the spring of every year. In a typical year, we would offer about 90 to 95 credits. This year, we only offered 70 credits. This is due in part to having difficulty finding um, educators that wanted to run a course. 
because they were already overloaded with responsibilities and tasks at the school level. And we also had to cancel some courses due to low enrollment. And again, we really attribute this to kind of teacher overload and kind of the state of where we are this year. So as we move into next year, we're hoping to see the number of people and their willingness to take advantage of these increase. However, if an educator doesn't want to take advantage of the more traditional semesterized courses, we also have a variety of other opportunities for them to earn credits, such as book studies. Um, they could serve as a mentor. They could teach a college course. They could supervise interns. Um, we have something called specialized learning experience. So there's a variety of ways that they can earn those credits towards their renewal. And all of those are posted on our website as well. So supporting our uh, support employees was one of the main goals when creating the Department of Organizational Development. We really wanted to be able to increase and support professional learning for all staff, not just our certificated staff. So here you'll see just a few of the, the ways we work to do this since the inception of our department. We plan to continue to develop and create more opportunities in the upcoming years. Our hope is that our as our department grows, we will be able to incorporate some more specific expertise on what the needs of our support staff are and be able to tailor those professional learning opportunities to their specific identified needs. Just a few things of note that we're very proud of um, during the pandemic, the height of the pandemic, we created the Educational Support Employee Portal which was an opportunity for all of our um, support staff to go in and access high quality on-demand modules related to their job. And they could kind of self-select areas of interest. And this really helped give them continual learning opportunities during that time when we were virtual. On the next slide, one of the other things that we're very excited about um, is the Support Employee Quarterly Newsletter. This is something that we started this year. Each quarter, we have a newsletter that we send out to our support staff that either spotlights support staff roles and responsibilities. We again provide on-demand professional learning. We have provide technology tips. We provide information related to tuition reimbursement for them, or we provide information related to wellness um, incentives in our system. So it's actually a variety of things, but we've been really pleased with the number of accesses that we've had. I think over each time, over a thousand people have accessed and utilized that newsletter because we were able to view the analytics. And so we've also gotten a lot of just narrative responses from support staff saying how grateful and thankful they are for us um, sending this and including them in our professional learning. So we are going to continue to do that moving forward. Yeah, uh, Ms. Strunz, just real quick, I, I know the efforts to support our support staff and professional learning uh, is an area of focus for you guys. And if I recall, um, for our board members, there is a budget request in for an additional teacher specialist uh, to really focus in on our support staff. So that's something we wanted to draw your attention to. Thank you. Also housed in organizational development is the Title II Part A grant management. And so a lot of what you just heard is funded by the Title II grant, Part A grant. Um, and so that grant really focuses in on building those systems that support the improvement of the quality and the effectiveness of both teachers and leaders, and I'm gonna draw your attention to that word leaders because in the Title II grant, it's a very focused group of leaders. They use a definition that only allows us to support school-based leaders. And so that does tie our hands in some regards in terms of how we can use this funding. So you'll see that for FY22, our total award is there for you to see. In our grant, we support 22 programs, and some of which are listed there. It also supports some um, salaries of some folks as well. And so it really does benefit the system at large in a lot of different ways. All activities need to be based in research, 
In addition, they must have outcomes that are aligned to evaluations so that we can determine the success of that particular program. So it's very clear that we are continually evaluating how successful those programs are, as well as ways to improve them if they continually are part of the grant. Power School Unified Talent. This is something that is um, that we are using um, for all employees here in Frederick County Public Schools. It is a professional learning platform that allows us as a system to not only centralize, but manage and track all of the professional learning, which is something that we have been lacking in the past. Um, oftentimes professional learning would occur in one department and then in another department, but we really didn't have the ability to pull the data from each department. So this is going to really allow us to be able to streamline that process, not only for the system, but also for our users. They will have one location to come to to look for professional learning opportunities for them. It's very personalized and accessible for all of our users. The thing that we're probably most excited about is the ability to collect the data and be able to um, achieve, retrieve that evaluation data from professional learning as well. Currently, our adult learning technology specialist serves as the Unified Talent Project Manager. She's really taken on this role in addition to all of her other responsibilities. Um, it's a monumental task as we learn the capabilities and the features of this program. And as we continue to use this, this platform and it becomes more widespread throughout the system, the responsibilities will continue to increase. Yeah, and, and I'd be remiss too if I didn't mention that I believe there's also another, an additional adult learning and technology specialist. And I think we've shared with the board in the past that that's a, that's a position that we kind of updated and modernized in the last couple of years. And they've really been instrumental in helping us manage all of our digital tools. And uh, the, the organizational development department has several significant large size tools and it's quite a lot of workload to keep all that functioning because remember a lot of these uh digital tools are interfacing with every single staff member that we have in the district and that's a lot of back-end work that will need to occur so i believe there's a position in for organizational development as well as one for the um, sasa department uh, so just to give give uh, board members a heads up about that Thank you, Kevin. So a topic that we are particularly proud of is the work that we have done in the field of mind-brain education. FCPS has really positioned themselves to be an international leader in the field of mind-brain education. Our journey into mind-brain education came as, came as a result of, a, of our innovative public-private partnership with the Center for Transformative Teaching and Learning, which is here in Potomac, Maryland. Our partnership and our work with educators here in Frederick County on mind-brain education have really led us to having the great honor of hosting Research Ed United States, which will be held here on Saturday, October 22nd, 2022 at Frederick High School. So we are really excited and thrilled about that opportunity. We are in the midst of the planning as we speak and trying to secure some great speakers um, we're involving, our, again, our institutes of higher education in this process because we know how imperative it is to, you know, train and get our, our potential teaching candidates up to date in this field of mind-brain education as well. So very excited about the collaboration possibilities here. Although organizational development is on the newer side, our building is turning 100. So it certainly is a banner year for the SDC. And while we're looking at the historical perspective on our building, one of the things that we're looking at is redesignating the building from the Staff Development Center to the Learning and Leadership Center. We really want to encompass all of the adult learners that come to the our building to learn and grow and experience that wonderful, inviting environment that we have here.
And with that, if you have questions, we would love to answer. Yes, absolutely. Um, and normally I turn it over to my colleagues first, but uh, because I have to get off at 11, which I'll just publicly state for another meeting, I'm going to take the opportunity to go first this time and then turn it over to them. Um, my son went to Urbana High at the Staff Development Center, and I have been able to go back and visit and be in the cafetorium as the students called it at the time. It was a nice bonding place for uh, one class, ninth graders of Urbana High there for more than a semester. Uh, so it has fond memories. Um, and I was at a mind brain education uh, staff development. So that before pandemic, so that was really interesting and, and uh, meaningful to me since I got to see it. Um, and I think that's wonderful that um, going on with that. And I would also say um, if somebody could, if it's possible, I like to go to things and other board members, the, the May evening on the national board certification, um, if that's something that is able to be visited either, I don't know if you're doing it virtually or in person, I assume you're going to try to in person in May, but uh, if we could get a notice on that, that would be wonderful. Um, Absolutely. But, so I Got a lot of notes. Oh, I wanted to talk about, let's see, Corinne, you are working on teacher leadership standards at the state level. I am on PSTAB or PSTAB, people call it, it's never a good name either way. But um, anyway, what somebody is on uh, PSTAB is involved with the Frostburg. So I brought up some notes. The full year practicum is a major concern to um, we have higher ed people and they talked specifically about the, the FSU's grant and they said it was hard to even get to the 150 days. So although it was considered a full year, it was hard to even get to the 150 days. So that's, that's a real point of contention or concern. Um, MSEA has it as well, hard to get those teachers, hard to have a teacher commit their entire year, hard to have the, the college year and the school year. So there's a lot of issues that took up a lot of time in our discussion. So uh, when you said you were on, on the other side of that, basically with the, the teacher leadership standards, that one is a major concern. So I just thought I'd put in a, a comment on that. Um, Great, thank you. And, and so if there's anything, you know, if you want to ever touch base with me or I know I can touch base with you on what's happening with that, that would be wonderful. Um, the Power School Unified Talent, that sounds like something maybe in the future the board could have a presentation on so we can all learn more about that. Just plant those seeds. Um, I wanted to ask about the conditional certification as we are hearing everybody, you know, all the data shows um, the lack of teachers, Maryland, I heard a statistic that we only get about 50% of our teachers from in state. And I was kind of shocked at that low statistic. Are you thinking that you're going to see more conditionally certified people in the future? Um, I if I look at trend data compared to how we've been in the last couple of years, I would probably say yes. Talking with HR, that also um, is, seems to be something that they're thinking of. We are talking with local colleges um, be, to put some supports in place for some of those teachers that come to us on those conditional certificate. And we're also looking to kind of fine tune that kind of induction pathway for them because we know our traditional induction coursework is not necessarily what these conditional teachers need. So we are taking a look at that and adding some additional possibilities so that we can support these conditional teachers to get the necessary coursework and support that they need when coming into Frederick County. That's very good. And, and I know uh, Mr. Johnson and I, uh, oh, Dr. Cuppet, did you want to throw in something? Yeah, just really quickly, I did want to point out, so for the board members here, that Dr. Marco did charge um, Ms. Lee, Meg Lee, and myself to kind of co-chair a group that's going to look at all of our comprehensive supports for new teachers. We understand that they have come out of an atypical uh, college experience, student teaching experience. We understand that there's um, you know, this new emphasis on national board certification and how do we set teachers up to be in a pathway. Uh, so we held our first meeting yesterday uh, to start looking at that. And so 
we're really looking at is how can every department in the acts division support our new teachers in the field um, and the principals who are supervising them. So we are going to look at comprehensively conditional certificates was one area that we're going to look at. Uh, but we're also looking at, for instance, a teacher new to Frederick County Public Schools, but not necessarily new to teaching. And how is that different than somebody who's just come out of their pre-service work? Uh, so it's going to be a pretty comprehensive look at this over the next couple of years. And then I, I wanted to say to begin with that this is so, so important. And, and I'm sure the system realized that the more you talk, the more I realized, oh my gosh, yes. And, you know, people, you know, I retired four years ago, started in 93. And um, you, know, you were just kind of thrown into it. And I started on October 1st. I was hired after the school year started. And I missed, I missed the FCTA new teacher lunch. I missed uh, the new teacher training. And then the second year, I never just really picked it up still. And so I, I kind of fell through the cracks and and got lots of help otherwise, but um, it wasn't as formalized. And I, I think, it, you know, I was also uh, an older uh, person, not 15 years out of college by that time with, with kids, all three kids in school. And um, I cried a lot. So I drive my son to football practice, cry and, you know, just like, um, uh, but I made it through with help. But th this stuff is so, so necessary. And then we just kind of throw administrators in there and expect them. And it's isolating to be an administrator. I don't have to tell, you know, you all know better than than I, some of you, um, that that isolation of being the only one in a building. And uh, so this is very, very important stuff. And I think I had one more. Oh, I wanted to ask um, Amy and Corinne what your backgrounds were, and then I'll turn it over. So I have, this is my 25th year here in Frederick County Public School. Um, I actually went to elementary, middle, high school <laughs> in Frederick County Public School. Then I went to Mount St. Mary's and Hood College. So basically I've been in Frederick County my whole life. I started um, at Monocacy Elementary School and I taught second grade at Monocacy Elementary School. And then I opened Thermont Primary School and I was at Thermont Primary School for seven years. Then I moved to Whittier Elementary School and I was there for six years um, and I was the literacy specialist there. And then I moved from there into uh, central office professional learning department. At the time, Linda Savetti was my supervisor and I worked in CII under Kevin. And I, so I've been in this team pretty much as, with every role. So um, I was a teacher specialist and I you know, ran the induction programming and then I ran new hire symposium and then I transitioned into supervisor. So I'm really married to this department and all the work that we do, and, and I'm committed to supporting our new hires uh, and all of their varied needs. So thank you for asking that question. Um, I, I've been with FCPS for 25 years, too. Uh, I started at Lincoln Elementary School, actually started as a student intern there. Uh, hired as a long-term sub there, and then was given, um, I was so lucky to be given a job there. Uh, love Lincoln Elementary School. I was then promoted to an assistant principal there where my counterpart was Dr. Kevin Cuppet. So he and I worked closely together for a number of years. And I was moved as an assistant principal over to Ballinger Creek Elementary and served as an assistant principal there for a year and then was promoted at Ballinger Creek Elementary to principal. I then suffered some health concerns and moved to central office into a teacher specialist role in what was then school administration and leadership. And I served with Dr. Harris and um, Mark Pritz and uh, in that department and really served our elementary principals as a teacher specialist and did a multi multitude of things um, for them in terms of support. From there, I was the coordinator of teacher principal evaluation for a number of years before shifting into this role. Thank you, because both of your names are familiar, and I, I was I was connecting you, Corinne, as a, as an administrator, and Amy as as a teacher induction. So I just wanted to put that in context. I did have that right, and uh, but so much more. Um, and you know, this isn't for you. This is more just a general statement that I love what you're doing. Once we get them in the system, 
one of the challenges is we've got to create a different pipeline to get more people into teaching because who's coming out of the teacher, traditional teacher colleges, um, you know, we got to get them going in. Even our, our teacher Academy of Maryland at, at the Career Tech Center, I understand is about 70 percent female and white. And so we, we've got to we've got to find other ways to to recruit and get people into the pipeline. And I think that's where Mr. J and I uh, never got to finish our conversation about, you know, how we get a mi more diverse teaching force. So but thank you for what you're doing. And I will turn it over to my colleagues. Thank um, you. Mr. Johnson, Ms. Johnson, questions? Mr. J, you want to go first? Sure. I'll, I'll be brief. I <clears throat> just want to thank um, Amy and Corinne for presenting. I love the work you do. Um, My Brain Education is just absolutely um, necessary. And, and also, I love what you said, uh, Corinne, about building our principles. It is so true that they are... Um, you know, the, the culture bearers at a school, you know, uh, kids look up to them. Um, I can remember one of, one of my more Rambuka students uh, actually uh, come into school dressed as the principal one day for twin day, he twinned with the principal. Um, so they are just really um, the culture bearers. And I think building them up um, is gonna be huge for us. Also um, for teacher retention. And uh, I wanna give a kudos now, and I'll do it again tonight for our teachers who have taken national board. That is just a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal uh, thing to do. And I'm grateful that we have them in our county and I wanna keep supporting them. Um, just wanted to, um, again, thank you for, for what you're doing for those uh, students. And then I wanted to ask, um, are we still housing? I think this is, this is a yes answer. This is a small detail I'm just curious about. Are we still housing um, evening school um, and online school at that same center, at the, at the uh, center you're at now? No, we are no longer housing that here. It hasn't been here for at least 10 years, Kevin, maybe even longer. Oh, my. What did we move it to? Uh, is it? Are you, are you talking about the um, uh, adult the virtual adult. school? Mm -hmm. um, so I think a lot of those are consolidated at TJ Middle School, Mr. J. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's right. You know what? That's right. I was there this summer. Thank you. Yes, but um, send um, Meg my best wishes, and I'm grateful for your department. It is much needed, and I um, thank you for the work you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Johnson, before you go, I, I just looked it up. Mr. Johnson, that is housed at TJ Middle, as you just acknowledged. So, Ms. Johnson, your turn. Uh, yes, I also want to extend my thanks for the presentation and uh, the, the excellent work that you all do, and to kind of... Um, Mary on to Mr. J, <laughs> even though we have the same last name, uh, we, we certainly think a lot alike in certain regards. And, and what I was going to bring up was something that he had mentioned. Um, and actually, it was perfectly timely because uh, I've, uh, I think some of you may know, I've been a, a professor at Frederick Community College for over 20 years, let's say that. And one of my former students from about the time I first started is, is now... Um, uh, a counselor with FCPS and uh, just, just this morning posted something that resonated with me. I'm just, if you bear with me, I'm just going to read it to you. The principal, the school takes on the personality of their principal. If the principal is mean, the staff will be mean to one another and the kids and the kids will be mean to one another. If the principal is full of energy, excitement and enthusiasm, the teachers will be energized to teach and the students will be excited about learning. The principal can either extinguish a flame of positivity or ignite a flame of hope. The principal is responsible for the culture and mood of their school. And her comment on that, again, this is a current FCPS employee uh, and counselor, wrote um, along with that comment, and I won't mention the name of the principal, but it said, the principal's name, you sure do ignite the flame. I am so thankful for you. So that's going on right now in our school. And if that doesn't give perfect testimony to, to the incredible importance of the work that, that you're doing, uh, I don't know what else would. So, um, so I just think this, uh, you know, the omen of seeing that this morning and then having this presentation regarding organizational development, just really, um, we can't underestimate the value of the work that you do. And so, in leading to that, uh, my 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 concern, or like kind of from the macro level, is 
what are we doing now in advance of like this, this potential shift of where we might um, have teachers who might want to stay in the classroom due to ramifications of the blueprint um, instead of moving into administration. So that's kind of as a board member up, my view up here, the kind of macro view is what are we going to do to keep making sure we have a good pipeline of really our, our best of the best that we see administrative uh, talent um, uh, arising in. And so can, can someone address that for me as my first question? Yeah, so yeah. I'll, I'll, jump, oh, I'll, I'll jump in, Corinne, just briefly. That, that has been a broad um, discussion that we've had at senior leadership level. Um, we certainly know that uh, if the, the career ladder plays out the way that we anticipated, uh, Will, that, that that could be both a good thing, um, building capacities of teachers to, to influence the profession, but also could be the, the exact challenge that you've stated, which is how do we have people move into administration? So uh, we are starting to have that initial discussion. I think Corinne will talk a little bit about some perspectives that they have from their department. I think one of the things that we heard loud and clear, even from the people that we see right now, is the idea of talent spotting and how important that that has become. Because sometimes people don't see their own talents in that perspective. And so making it even more important for us to go out and say, you know, I see this in you. Um, so I think it's going to become more important that as we see someone being really ready for that next role, whether it's a teacher leadership role or an assistant principal role or a principal role, we're really direct and saying, here's why I believe you would make a fabulous administrator. This is what I see in you, because sometimes it's that that really gets me excited for that role because I might not see that in myself. Okay, thank you. And then again, just uh, on the follow up um, to that with respect to our principal um, professional development program, I mean, how, how much, right now, how much effort is being put into that versus assistant principal? Well, our principal program just started. So right now, we, for the first time, it, it was probably about equal. <laughs> Um, but because that just began, um, we are going to make a lot of tweaks to it because it was our first year, but it, this year it was a, about equal for assistant principals and principals, but yeah. in the past, it was much more focused on assistant principals. Yeah. And Ms. Johnson, um, in addition to some of the programs that they've talked about, um, it's important to remember that our SASA directors, along with other departments, um, provide professional learning for principals through uh, administrative leadership and instructional leadership meetings as well. Uh, now, a lot of those we have backed off on during the pandemic because of the number of things that principals are trying to manage and handle. Uh, but that's always been in my role as an administrator and, and went uh, all the way back through when Dr. Harris was a principal as well. We've always participated in professional learning, whether it's the latest uh, legal updates from Jamie Cannon around uh, whatever it might be. The one that we're currently looking at right now is Title IX. Uh, we would get updates from curriculum associated with instructional programs. We would get updates in, in any a number area across, from across these departments. And so we really try to make sure that those components are part of that professional uh, learning as well. And I imagine um, Kathleen Chappelle is going to talk a little bit about the role of the SASA department and sale directors in day-to-day -day interactions with principals. If you don't, I would love for you to talk about that. <laughs> I just was going to, um, to clarify that certainly with the pause on professional learning in the more traditional um, ALIL meetings, um, from the beginning of the pandemic, our directors have um, established regular meetings with principals. We met uh, weekly. Um, through the most intense periods. Um, we are currently meeting once uh, once or twice a month, depending upon need, and we schedule as needed. But in addition to 
any nuts and bolts or information that we're passing along. Um, we often also have guests who visit with us to provide some professional learning or some updates on policies and practices to ensure that principals are getting what they need to continue um, and that we are making the best use of their time because they are very busy. Um, currently, as you know, there are lots of things in flux and they're, they're working very hard every day. So we do try to fill the gap and then we make quarterly visits in addition to um, occasional informal visits, depending on need and interest of the principal and trying to support them in their own career journey. Uh, and 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 thank you. And I just uh, I can personally speak to my reiteration of making best use of the time of our our senior leaders in our schools. And that would uh, I still support any absolutely unnecessary professional development uh, only come at the request of the principal themselves, um, and so that they can continue to do the uh, incredible duties that they're uh, being tasked with on a on a day to day basis. Um, you know, for, and from including even helping serve lunch for students, you know, so that we can have the, the flow of our schools remain. So I just want to, so I'm all about professional development, but I just want to reframe that to say, yes, the, you know, the board has clearly stated that we would like to make sure that we're making best use of the time of our, our staff and, and, and not over taxing them, um, to the extent possible, because there's certainly a number of things that we cannot, uh, change due to the conditions that we find ourselves in. Um, the, I will say um, from my perspective, and I think this can be a, a separate conversation, I think I'll ask um, with Dr. Cuppet, is just to understand uh, from a organizational perspective, like where, where support, because I know there's been talk in here about the, the training for support staff and, and I'm, I'm used to, you know, certain models of organizational development and a lot of that resting under the human resources function. So I'm going to ask for a separate conversation with Dr. Cup, but just so I understand, um, because if I see support development or support staff, you know, for secretarial staff, office staff being done through organizational development. My natural inclination is that reporting structure would be through um, uh, Miss Baptist, you know, and I, I don't think I see that in here. So, so I think those are going to just be more for me still, I guess I'm in year two of being on the board, but I, you know, there's, there's, I guess I should have a certain amount of knowledge, but you know, none of us have been able to get out to schools and, 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 and to, to see people as much as we would like. So I think that's left me with, uh, you know, some pretty big gaps that I need to fill in in terms of how we are uh, structured. So, so the, so I just want to just state that, that I'm going to have further mm -hmm. follow-up questions with Dr. Cuppet to improve my understanding. Yeah. Um, so. and, and Ms. Jones, I'll be happy to include anybody else that's part of responding to that. I know Meg will Megley will probably be part of response to that. But yeah, once you get that together, send it over. We'll be happy to um, give responses for you. Okay, After thank you. I don't know what I don't know. So, <laughs> uh, but I, I know you'll provide any answers that I have. But I just want to let everyone else know I do have a number of other questions, but I'd rather have them offline because uh, they're more for me to um, enhance my awareness and knowledge of our, our structure. So thank you, everybody. Yeah, that is a great question. Meeting was canceled. So when when you're meeting with state legislatures, uh, legislators and their schedules often change. So meeting was just canceled. Um, and I, I did have that circled on my paper and I overlooked it because I've got random notes. Um, that was a, a new thing to me as well. And and uh, Ms. Johnson, I, FACE has somebody remind me how many over 180 different job descriptions or some crazy thing like that. So, and their jobs, of course, some are night, some are early morning that they, so FACE has a very difficult time just meeting with their members. And they, um, there are times where on teacher work days, they might have a staff development day and where in the past, you know, then people could come and do that, but not everybody was available. So it's always been an issue for FACE to support their members and a lot of times as you said um you know a lot of them have these industry certifications that are very specific my husband's an electrician so i i know some of the things like i did the osha 30 hour course for the company and things like that so but he has to do the electrical part um but they they have all different kinds like that and things so uh, i think just even a newsletter 
that they can access when it works for them. Uh, you know, because also even technology at times can be an issue that it's not something they use in their jobs. So it's not something that they're very familiar with. Anyway, that that has been an area of need, and I um, I'll I would love to hear the answer when uh, Ms. Johnson gets her her specific question. But I do know just from hearing through the years what an area of need. So that I'm glad that people are trying to fill that. And I wanted to say that uh, when you talk about that was a great great quote, Ms. Johnson. That's so important. I, I a friend that. We went to high school and then we had kids to go through the system together, but she wasn't a teacher, a very supportive mom. And at one point she said, wow, I never thought how important the principal was to how teachers like their job, like how hard they can make it or how much better. I'm like, it's everything. And, um, and so having worked with Dr. Harris and Dr. Cuffett as my assistant principals, um, when they were just new to being assistant principals, their, their first uh, position, Dr. Harris uh, surprised us with um, nice notes when he first started, then he got too busy, but it's like, wait a minute, what is this? This is a nice note. I don't think I've ever received a nice note, you know, and I was early in my career and it was such uh, a breath of fresh air. One of the things the Twin Ridge staff got him when he moved to Lincoln, I think I'm, I could be wrong, but wherever he moved to after he left us, I know Dr. Cuppet went to Lincoln, um, got him a pair of roller skates because he was always on the move, always on the move with his laptop and just rushing, rushing here and there. And Dr. Cuppet looked like the previous AP, but their personalities could not have been different. And so the kids at first, I don't think knew it was somebody new because they were both tall and, and uh, you know, tall and slender. And uh, the other person is no longer in the system. And that's a good thing because he was not a good AP. So Dr. Cuppet comes in, Mr. Cuppet, and he would go down the hall singing. And, you know, it just, just brightened up the day. And Dr. Cuppet was the first one that I, as a teacher, felt I was getting a little more comfortable by then and been a few more years, but then I could try things in an observation that weren't like the dog and pony show or the tried and true. And it'd be like, I'm going to try this. I don't know if it's going to work, but I want some advice. I want, you know, and I want to improve my teaching. And that was the first time I really saw observation and evaluation as the potentially good thing it could be for improving your teaching. And so I wanted, I wanted to thank both of them for, um, you know, the, the impacts that they had on my life. Um, okay, Mr. J has to stop at 11. Very good. Excuse me. Very good. Talked about this at our PSTEB meeting. If the chat happens, somebody needs to read it so that it's all public information. But uh, anyway, he was just saying he had to stop at 11. Um, so I'll be quiet now and uh, we can finish with the agenda of what comes next, I think, unless anybody else had anything else for our presenters. Oh, yeah. I, I, if you no, don't mind, um, Ms. Yahoo, I just, the, that, the quote was from Dr. Marcus Jackson and um, he, he's a, an educational consultant and he's written four books that I see here, um, 10 Daily Essentials for Principals. 10 Daily Essentials for Assistant Principals, Social Emotional Support for Educational Leaders, and uh, Social Emotional Support for Teachers. So, um, and uh, his background is is has been revolving around um, uh, helping uh, underperforming schools um, raise their raise their uh, success um, for our students. And uh, yeah, and just uh, anyhow, I'm this is all going to help me like dive in a little bit more about the, the work there. So thank you. Thank you for that. So. Yeah. Ms. Yoho for the agenda for next meeting, uh, it will be the, um, the big March meeting where all of our curriculum specialists who have any curriculum standards that they're proposing to either be changed or adopted any new courses that we're creating at the secondary level or any courses that we want to pilot. Uh, and or any courses that are being eliminated. So anybody, any of the specialists who have that will be rotating through uh, presentation, seeking uh, the CNI committee to forward these to the full board for um, consent on the next board meeting thereafter. 
And so I will really rely on Ms. Johnson and Mr. Johnson to fill in any gaps because this, these are the ones where the other board members then tend to go a little nuts. You know, if we don't, uh, I, do, I try not to go into too much detail during the board meeting because this is usually at the end, pick the highlights and say the PowerPoints are available, you know, check them out. But as you know, Dr. Cobb, the one where the, the little orphan courses that were being changed, not really dropped, but caused a great deal of concern to the public and then to board me members. And it's like, note to self, be sure to inform them so that that one will all take good notes and, and we'll have to be sure we, we fill them in so that they don't panic because, you know, this isn't their committee. They're, they're deep into to the policy committee. So um, they rely on us to, to give a well-rounded uh, report and all, but uh, lots lots to uh, present from this one. Um, and uh, again, um, you know, that power school unified talent, I, I really do think when you all feel like you've got a better under your belt to, to present to the board, I think would be a great idea. But, uh, Absolutely, we can do that. No doubt, no doubt. All right. Anything else for the good of the group? Thank you all so much. Really appreciate it. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Thanks, everybody.